Okay. Sweet. Hi. I don't know where I was looking. We're on? Yeah. Are we are we are we on? Facebook is loading. Sweet. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Darcy and Scott. Uh to dog to dog training. Com. This is our uh, live lunchtime Q and A, and uh, we've uh, had some wonderful feedback. Thank you so much. We 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 are so appreciative you would join us for this. Um, you can find it uh, also on our YouTube channel, and um, it's available later to to uh, watch at your pleasure as well. So we have some really fun questions today. They are from children. <laughs> we all know about children's questions, right? They have the best yeah. questions. They do, and they are unfiltered often. Okay? So, and what will happen is, Darcy and I will be teaching. See, we, we, we do a lot of, of private uh, stuff with families in home stuff as well. We've done that for years and years and years. And the parents are... You know, the, 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 the children are kind of watching. They're watching their parents. They're watching us. They're, and you can just see the light bulbs going on. You know, that they're, what we're saying is, is uh, I, I don't understand. Well, the parents probably feel the same way, but, you know, we don't want to interrupt them. We don't want to make a big thing of it, right, whatever. And so you start saying, honey, did you have a question? You know, yeah. And, you know, the question comes in, the parents are, oh, go. Sorry, you know, whatever. So kids are awesome. And because we are preparing to launch our Kids and Canines program, um, which is a, an all around A to Z, uh, entertaining, enjoyable, educational, exceptional, I mean, we go on and on, product to create perfect partnership between your child or children and your dog. And that includes the responsibility of taking care of all of these things. Well, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna answer some of these questions that kids have. Our first one is hysterical. And I know dang well that adults wanna ask this, but they, they don't wanna say the word poop, <laughs> right? Okay, why does my dog eat poop? Now, let's, pull that apart <laughs> okay so first questions we'll usually ask is so who's poop is there eating and that sounds weird right I mean often the question has become it's, it's eating either its own poop or another dog's poop or whatever but for a ton of people you're gonna say it eats the cat poop Tootsie Rolls yeah oh my gosh you know Folks, we've been in this forever, so you know, I mean, we're, we're going between us, we over 50 years, and um, I've never known a dog, frankly, that if offered, the opportunity comes up, isn't going to eat cat poop, all right? Now, as we answer these questions, we're, we're, we're going to hop around a little bit, because number one, the scientific term for this uh, you youngsters out there, people, is coprophagia, all right, which is the Greek term for the eating of feces, okay? Now, see, see, see what it does? That's people go, it's so oh, delicious. Why, why are we talking about poop, you know? Because a child asked us, and I've been asked many times by yeah. children why this happens. Um, cats uh, require a higher protein content in their food. So cats do not survive well eating dog food. That's that they won't do that. In fact, many cats would actually starve to death trying to take in enough nutrients with what you're feeding your dog. So they because the protein is so much higher, they excrete protein. This is our uh, speculations, our theory, what here, but it, it explains a lot. Dogs being predators, you know, being carnivores generally speaking, they are uh, deficient in certain things. Now, the fact is, if you're talking about a dog that eats either its own stool 
or another dog stool, people don't know that there, there, there's a big debate, right, about why that's happening. Well, they must be seeking other minerals or what, whatever. That doesn't make a lot of sense usually because it doesn't seem to be specific to any particular thing. This dog's on a different diet. In fact, I had an entire kennel full of bomb sniffing dogs. That's where I'm from is explosive detection, right? I never had that problem. And I brought in a black female Labrador and she was coprophagic. And within a week, they're all waiting for each other to poo so that we could feast, right? Which is, you know, whatever. I'm just going, what is, I will, you know, whatever. I tried everything. I added Forbid, which is a product you add to the food supposedly to make the, but nothing mattered. I put pepper spray on the poo. Delicious. Spicy. Spicy poo. Spicy. <laughs> okay. Didn't change anything. Called a mentor of mine. Old guy, wise, grumpy. Um, I said, yeah, man, I got this going on. It's, I, I can't, I cannot deal with this. I said, dude, having a dog in the vehicle on a cold winter morning, you got the heater turned up, they're wet, it's humid, and they burp. And they've been eating poop. It smells good. I mean, seriously, <laughs> it's like retching and driving off the road type stuff, right? So he says, clean it up. And being you know, Scott being such, well, I don't, well, I me. Clean it up. Scott, I don't care if you have to have a shovel waiting under the dog's butt. Get it cleaned up. Isn't that weird? Okay, you know, it's such a simple thing. But, you know, we don't want to. I don't want to go out right now. I just want to send the dog out to go poop. I don't want to have to go out and watch and clean it up or whatever. But... Uh, it was awful. And so that's what we did. Four days, we were done. Four days. And the dogs stopped. They just lost the habit. that They lost interest more or less. But <laughs> we were much more diligent about keeping poop cleaned up off the lawn. So that would be our first uh, training tip today. Applied. Seriously. I tried everything. I put sulfur on there. It's a, I mean, I tried jalapeno. I tried jalapeno. All this stuff. Dog don't care. I've seen dogs lick pepper spray up off the ground. You know, some dogs, oh, they hate it. Just like people. Some like spicy, some like don't like. Some just are vile. I won't name any names. <laughs> so, um, now, rabbit poop, bird poop. Deer poop, horse poop, cow poop. Again. Um, Dogs like it. Yeah. They, most of them will. My dachshunds, and we had a bunny. And the dachshunds would poke the bunny to make him hop and poop like a gumball machine. <laughs> and they would go. And the bunny would go hop, hop, poop, hop. They just had this, it's what we call in science, symbiosis. They were symbiotic. Well, in my six pound chihuahua back in the day, when I mean, she was little, and she would somehow ghost downstairs in the basement sometimes. I had multiple cats, and I'm like thinking, those poops in the cat box were about as big as her. <laughs> it was disgusting. Oh. Um, and so, you know, there's training we did. Uh, we did some barrier stuff, and uh, because I don't like it. No, it's generally speaking, generally speaking, you're not going to have a ton of health-related problems. Generally speaking, now before all vets and stuff get all set, it is, however, the absolute way that worms are spread. So whether they're eating the actual stool itself or the stool's been on the ground and you've got yeah. microfilaria, you know, which are baby worm, you know, and you take that in, tapeworm, roundworm, you know, all that. Yes, 
It is not something we really want to have happen. Clean it up. Seriously. Say to yourself, okay, for a week's time, I'm going to go out there with my poop scooper, my bag. Now, people who curb their dogs living in urban centers, apartment stuff, rarely will they see this behavior because the dog has no opportunity. The dog is never left to just kind of cruise around and find, oh, this smells interesting, you know, and consume it. Um, there was a police dog I knew named Charlie many, many years ago. Charlie was crazy, and he wasn't very bright. Bite the crap out of you, though, but he wasn't very bright. He knew he wasn't supposed to poop in the patrol vehicle. <laughs> so the handler, uh, I don't think Charlie ever poops. Well, Charlie was recycling, yeah. right? He'd poop in the, in the patrol car. I knew he wasn't supposed to, so he'd consume it because he knew he'd be in trouble otherwise. You know, so it, I mean, he, he, he literally was not seeing normal pooping behavior because the dog is consuming it, you know, whatever. Um, it is not uncommon. Um, it, not, it not, not only is not uncommon, it can be fairly common depending on the situation. Multiple dogs, um, dogs that are left out for extended periods of time together, uh, stool left in the yard for extended periods of time, where curiosity or whatever. Now, scientifically, I'm, we're not going to weigh in, okay, on, on what, I don't, it's not known exactly why, except we know vegetarian poop has elements to it that most carnivores, predators will seek. So, Killing a deer as a mountain lion or a zebra, as, you know, whatever, they will consume the gut sack very quickly. That's the, the bacteria that are in there, tripe. That's, I mean, you can feed your dog tripe. I do. Here's a trip, tripe feeding right here. Mm -hmm. You know, see, you can't smell her. That's good. You know, <laughs> My tripe on She's hands. been having it. Yeah. Well, oh, but what's fascinating, because even other animals, so I have magpies in the, my backyard. And because I'm a raw feeder, see, the, 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 the food is very clean, and the magpies will sit on the back fence waiting for my dogs to eliminate. And then, see, I don't, Which have, is about this big. I, I don't have a ton of poop that I have to pick up yeah. because the birds Hard come in, rock. they pick up the poop, mm -hmm. and away they go. Yeah, because, again, like the cat poop, you have excess you have calcium, you have, which is the bones, granted, you know, other things. So they do not look like, how many of you have seen your dog poop and immediately whirl around and put their, their nose this close to the poop? I appear to be healthy, right? Is that, you go, what are you doing? Why are you smelling your poo? Yeah, well, we do not care for that generally. If you do, we do not judge. That's fine. But we don't want to know either. But we don't want to know, okay? <laughs> so basically for you kids, you know, whatever, when you ask that, dogs eat poop because it's a bad habit. They'll pick it up. They're capable of it. And once they do, it's not that big a deal to them. And people sometimes don't even know what's happening. A lot of people don't know what's happening until they – see it on the dog's teeth or what, all the gross things. You're like, oh, what is that? Well, I mean, we could go on from poop. Rotting material, you know, dogs tend to taste and find it interesting, whatever, and they can get in trouble. You know, e eating something that's, that's full of a bacteria that has a bug in it, and then we have gut problems. And dogs do that. Say, well, my, my dog pukes. Dogs do that. They throw up. You know, a dog will, will often in its lifetime have several instances where you have uh, GI tract issues, um, diarrhea, you know, whatever. That is not uncommon. And unless it is prolonged or protracted, where we may have a food allergy or something else, then, you know, it's just one of those where you tell people, well, you know, you just uh, make sure they're hydrated and sorry, clean it up. You know, that's, we're sorry. So... Will they, will any dog eat poop? Well, I can't say that. But will seven out of 10 sometime in their life? It's, it, there's a probability. Yeah. That that's Cross my fingers. Right. I've never had to deal with that 
except for the cat food. Now, why not? <laughs> Tell us why not. How much uh, total open free range do you do with your dogs? Just letting them do whatever they want to well, do. Well, that doesn't really happen. Exactly. Yeah, so especially if I turn my dogs out to go to the bathroom, see if I left Gypsy out in my backyard, she'd rip it to shreds. Um, Joe, I don't know. He goes out there and tries to find the grossest, vilest thing to eat, and then he can come in and hork it up in my house. So for me, it's like I turn my dogs out, they go to the bathroom, and they come right back in. I don't leave them unattended out in the back. If they're out there and I'm out there, see, then I can come <coughs> off something. So, um, That's that whole freedom thing, right? See, we, we say, well, you know, I mean, the dog needs. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And if you, if you if you leave a dog unsupervised and you, you do not have the capacity to limit their exposure to that which can be harmful, that which can be expensive, if we had a dollar for every hot tub cover, mm -hmm. you know, which Darcy has talked, we've talked about it before, it's unbelievable. I don't know what it is about them, but I mean, seriously, dozens and dozens of people. What happened to my hot tub cover? You know, my dog means, and I bought a new one and I ate that one too. Well, it's so, like I have a fire pit. And somebody, you know, turned my dog out, who was not watching them. I wasn't home. And then all of a sudden, I'm seeing she's eating. I have a red glass in my Beans. fire pit. Yeah. And Gypsy's having them like a snack. Right. You know, so then I bought actually a cover for the fire pit so I can, because on occasion, somebody turns the dog out yeah. unattended. So I can't have her eat glass. Yeah. Curiosity. Yeah. And that's. The whole poop eating thing sounds really, really gross to us. To a dog, their taste is completely different from ours. They obviously do not taste a lot of what we do. Um, I don't know that they even experience some of what we do. Their nose is essentially a biological computer of extraordinary sensitivity, right down to the molecule, which gives them a great deal of information. So even if you are a visual creature, you're looking at a painting that's psycho or gross or scary or, or whatever, um, you would still look at it. You can make the choice to look at it. And you can say, you know, the, the colors, you know, if you look at it analytically, which is what a dog does with its nose, there's X amount of colors, the tones, the depth, you know, the subject. That's, to us, our brains are hooked to our eyes. That's what a dog does with its nose. Its mouth, for many reasons, tends to be an orifice that they experiment with. Lick it, taste it, whatever. But while we're going, where are we going? Skip that. Oh, spit that out immediately right now. That's, I do that all the time. And I'm stomping my foot on the deck, right? And they're running. It's like a two-year-old has something whose mouth is not supposed to. Stop where you are right now. So, oh, I'm going to do it, whatever. And that's why children swallow candies and, you know. Things. So, yeah, the same, they're experimenting around. It, it's in their mouth and it happens. Second question is related to the first a little bit, but not completely. Why does my dog pee on everything? Isn't that a great kid's question, you know? See, as adults, we approach it, it's an annoyance. Right? We hate well, and if you have a dog peeing in your house or peeing on certain things outside, it's like, you know, unwanted and, and you, you don't. Yeah. Dead bush, right? Right. Right here. Right. We, we, de we deal with this together. Uh, with, uh, you wouldn't believe it. But yeah, right here. I see. And sometimes you can smell it if you go into a house. Uh, something is discolored, the corner of a, a couch, whatever. Um, or you'll get people being ticked off. You'll never guess what this dog did. You'll never guess. Peed on your bed. What kind of psychotic are you? How do you know that? You mean psychic, you're psychic, right? <laughs> That's what they, they know. I'm talking about myself. So, your bed is you. It's, it's like this portrait of you. The most extraordinary portrait of you possible. We talk about all of our skin cells and the best cells. Well, to the dog, that's all information that's accessible. So if we have a problem, what is P to a dog? It's a post-it note that says, I've been here, 
This is mine. Ink, right? It's ink. Same thing, they'll pee and then turn around. You know? You've got to check and make sure the pee is fine. Well, and you'll see other dogs like, I mean, my dogs will do this. One will pee, the other dog will pee over their pee. I mean, you see this often at dog parks or. Covering. Yeah. They'll cover. Why? Because it's paint, it's ink. So, dogs that are intact will generally speaking be much more involved in this kind of behavior because it is in fact a chemical communication device. Uh, it, it gives males and females a great deal of information about health, about whether they are available, uh, about whether he's in the area, the male, whether the, whether the female is approaching estrus, you know, that's, I mean, he can tell. He'll leave his calling card, I am here, you know, whatever. They don't need pictures. They don't need drones, right? They got pee. Where, where, where is that boy down there? You know, I need to mate with someone, right? No, they have pee. And it's a behavior that doesn't know boundaries, but marking, which is what the question was kind of about. You know, Missy's leg. I, I, I have a, I have a girl dog, Scott. She lifts her leg and pees. You know, what is up with that? Dominant female, for one thing, it's learned behavior. Most males who never see a dog lift their leg won't, you know, or just barely. Uh, most young males learn that to get that up, yeah. to pee up. And, and so my staff is terrier because, I mean, he rarely lifts his leg. And if he ever does, it is. It's like barely a lifted leg. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he pees a lot. So a dog that isn't too terribly interested in, in uh, territory, we talk all the time to people. You have to understand that your dog can reserve urine, okay, because it's important to them. Something that we don't do well. And if we do, if you tried, you would get sick. Yeah, you have a UTI, you know, something. People have tried that with wolves, right? And say, well, I'm going to pee around my camp so that the wolves know, and they had to cut the study short because he got a terrible bladder infection. Okay, but canids don't have a problem with that. But dogs that are not real turfy, that aren't, they're, they're not as involved in marking their territory because your rank structure is different. See, dominance is different with, with all dogs. We'll go out like her Joe, and he'll stand there and pee for, you know, 15 seconds, because he's done. He is, I'm, I'm peeing now so that I don't have pressure. Yeah, I rarely ever see him, like, go pee, 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 pee. No, no. And that is a sign of a dog that is its very natural behavior. It's very common behavior, where the dog is sniffing. You say, what? Just go. Well, your dog is, the world is a completely different place to them. It's chemical, so that they, they, they'll lay, and it, it may not be other dogs, even where cats have been, where birds have been. Um, my my three-legged trike, okay, is he's a, uh, I call him trike. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a pit bull, uh, American bulldog mix, delightful animal. He likes bird poop. I have doves nesting in my tree. Delicious. They would be if I had my way. Okay, so he goes out underneath. He's looking and he likes the little bird poops because the nest is up here, whatever. Um, and he, that's one of the very few places that he will do a marking pee. It's, he'll nibble, 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 take one step, and then mine. Because I have been this mine, you know, this place right here. And the weird thing about it is, here comes my little male dog. He's old, you know. He's very dominant. He's an ex-stud dog, right? He's since been neutered. But he'll come, he'll wind that pee. From clear across the yard if the wind's right. You'll see him whip around. Hmm. Pee, 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 pee. And he'll cover. Trikes pee. Trikes over here watching. 
it's called Toby Leaves. Just so. Right. We can add the covering game. I'll sure. And really, you see it at dog parks, like you say, you know, a pole. P, no, I'll be. No, P, no, I'll be. And then turning around, another third dog comes in, P, 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 it's running down. That's why dog parks smell so good yeah. sometimes. Yeah. That's, it's just not potty training. This is not about elimination, per se. Marking is about chemistry. Now, any of you who hunt, have parents who hunt, you know, talk about animals. You watch National Geographic, uh, the, the, the big cats back up to the tree and pee. And, but guys, it's, it's graffiti for them. And it is easily read graffiti. You'll see them approach first and take, hmm, Fifi's in heat. Oh, I see that uh, Spot is not feeling well. You know what? That's, I mean, we don't know, but it's unbelievable, you know, what, what they can do. So that is why your dog pees on stuff. The problem being, um, it's a natural behavior that will occur if the dog remains intact because that's part of their society. If you spay or neuter, and you've allowed that behavior, as the behavior has started and has formed a habit, sometimes that won't go away. You'll, you'll say, uh, Scott, my dog's neutered, and he pees on my curtains and stuff. It's still ink. He's the habit, it's my smell. I like the curtains. I pulled the lady's couch away one time. She couldn't figure out where the odor was coming from. Pulled the couch out, the shears, are rotted away. There's a big yellow, but they're literally, they've rotted away. Her dachshund, see another dachshund, um, has been peeing behind the couch for years, probably. He knew dang well they, they, they started getting after him for doing it around the house. Well, I'm gonna have my place. I had a, a lady who said, I have these shoes. Uh, they were expensive shoes. I never wore them. You know, I'd maybe one time like buy them for a something, right? And she put them in the back of her closet. And something else came up several years later. And she gets her shoes out and the insides are kind of weird looking. They're funky, they're kind of shriveling, you know, whatever. And she's, whoa, these stink. Her dog had been going in and peeing in those shoes in her bedroom closet for a long time. And to the dog, that is imminently logical. Okay, don't try and say, they know what they're doing. You know, I'm claiming the stuff. Well, the fact is, if you've established law and it's your pack paradigm, then no, I don't, you don't mark in my turf. You know, that's, that's not your turf to mark in. And generally speaking, getting this behavior to stop has a great deal to do with appropriately ranking the dog in the back. Okay, now, I have saved the last for Darcy. You want to be kind of quiet, laughing at the poop jokes. Right? <laughs> okay, but Darcy's an expert on this. The third question was chewing. Why does my dog chew? Everything. Stupid stuff. And we've seen some crazy stuff. I'm gonna have her talk to you about how she deals with chewing. <laughs> she has a dog right now that is got a mouth like a bear trap, right? But the fact is, guys, um, they can be like beavers. I had we've seen. We went to a house. All of the dining room table chairs were gnawed around. Just like a beaver, a you know, rodent had been in there of some kind. So chewing activity. Yeah, so Let's like talk. if you have young dogs, so of course they have the um, little sharp milk teeth, and then they start to lose those uh, teeth and their teeth start to come in. So from the very beginning, I was giving, you know, I give my dogs things to chew on. I don't just like cross, cross my fingers and hope to die, <laughs> you know, because then it would be the baseboards, 
it would be the corner of the cupboard, it'd be the chairs, it'd be the table. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, and they explore with their mouth. So, I mean, just like little kids put things in their mouth, dogs will do the same thing. So, um, I mean, cattle hoof, raw meaty bones. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can actually give to the dog. Um, and as Gypsy was going through her teething thing, I, I had a ton of stuff. And even now, um, you know, there's uh, like a bone or something like that. Uh, you watch them. If, if you get a nice meaty bone for a dog, I mean, they'll lay there for hours chewing and licking. And you kind of see them kind of go into this like drugs, interesting man. state where they just kind of close their eyes and it's very therapeutic for them um, and pleasurable. And it's a puzzle and it keeps them busy. So, you know, chewing, I mean, you know, they're not like us. So chewing on Barbies and Tupperware and, um, you know, flip flops Socks and, and underwear. whatever. It's, it's like, especially if it has you on it, your odor. I mean, bras and underwear and all sorts of things. The dog will go, oh, that's my person's. And it is very pleasurable to them. And they will, you know, chew on those things. Um, if you have kids that have like little fluffy slippers and toys that, you know, that they're playing with and kids, you know, Legos. Uh, will put stuff in their mouth and then put it down for the dog or whatever. So uh, I always am monitoring those types of things. I keep an eye what's on the floor. If I see something, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is. Like you may not think it's a problem but it can be a problem. So um, I always watch those kinds of things, like what's on the floor, what I give to my dog. I'll say the number one thing I never give to my dog is um, rawhide. I mean, and you can watch tons of videos out there about how they manufacture it, um, but it is leather. So if you have a nice leather couch. Shoes. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's like in the dog. Belts starts to lick on that. Um, I mean, if you have a snipper, you know, a dog that kind of snips at the rawhide, uh, I mean, you might be okay. But if you have a dog that like starts getting the whole thing soft. in their mouth, you know, and they get it back in there and um, it gets soft and they swallow it, it can cause a problem in their intestinal tract. They can get twist. It's like 4,500 bucks at least here. If they can save the dog. You know, to get it out. Otherwise it'd be fatal. Yeah. So I mean there's a lot of things like, you know, if you talk about feminine hygiene products, uh diapers. See, you know, dogs getting into trash and chewing on those things. I mean, it can be catastrophic. So I'm always paying attention, what is my dog chewing on? And I mean even things like in my backyard See, if I turned them out, well, okay, I'll tell you a story. So I go out of town, somebody turns my dog out, I come home, my tree's missing. I don't know where it is. Well, I actually, I do. Because <laughs> there was about this much of the stump left. And, uh, well, we know Gypsy had her way with the tree, and I was told, just buy a new one. I don't want to buy a new tree. But, you know, but wood. You know, yeah. sticks. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's. And they'll consume them. Yeah. They'll sit and chop oh. them up. Some will just well, cut them out, some will eat them. Rocks, the rocks, the story of the guy throwing the rocks in the. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, had a, I had a guy who couldn't, <clears throat> his dog wouldn't go in the kennel. I, I didn't know this. The vet called me and said, You need to come and see this x ray. I said, Well, well just, just, no, you need to come and see. That's what? Okay, fine. I wasn't very happy, you know. I was running this bottom dog unit. So I go over there. There's, he looked like he had eggs. Like you see an x-ray of a bird. In yeah, bird. in his stomach. In his stomach. I said, what is that? He said, Scott, that's rocks. That's, you know, gravel. About this big. Well, that's what my whole kennel building is surrounded with. Whatever. So I, I've checked with the hounds. What is going on? Oh, well, his, this dog's name is Rambo. You know, had a scar over one. I mean, the, the dog was, was <laughs> really interesting. And, you know, 
he was a little nervous about the dog and couldn't get him to go in his, the dog would chase anything you threw. He was a psychotic that way. So he would pick up a rock, throw it in, and lock him in. And Rambo was too dumb to ever know, he would always chase the rock. Well, he's eating the rocks that the handlers throw. And it cost, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have this bag of rocks taken out. Rambo was fine. You couldn't kill Rambo with a sledgehammer, probably. You know, but the rock, I mean, the dog is consuming the rocks. I came to a house, German Shepherd dog. What's your problem? Well, I don't really know how to describe it unless you see it. We see we can have that. Takes me to the backyard. What do you see? Well, I see wood chips all over. So your dog got into your chip pile. No. 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 You see over that bin over there, Scott? That was a cord. A full pickup load of firewood. How much firewood do you see this stuff? I don't see any. That is because my German Shepherd dog has turned it into chips in my backyard. We have spent over a thousand dollars digging splinters and things out of his tongue and his he eats logs. <laughs> right? Now, chewing is a natural behavior. Dogs chew. Okay, so Dars is telling you about things that, you know, that why bone works well, horn works well, hoof works well, because it cleans their teeth. It, it strengthens their jaws and their teeth. It burns calories. It, it gives them a good looking head, you know, because of, of the chewing. It's a very, very natural thing. But like all things and with our genetic manipulation and all of your differences in drives and the, the dog's setup, right? What are they bored? Are, are they restricted too much? Are they whatever? Dogs that are predisposed to chewing can be a major problem. And there's sometimes so much destruction, it can kind of like make your head spin. Yeah, but we just can't believe what we're seeing. Uh, and the people love it. They still love their dog. You know, we're, not, we're looking at each other. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, but okay. I mean, a ton of that can be managed Many by days. you know by not just crossing your fingers and hope to die and turn the dog out in the backyard and then they get into something and you don't even know what it is we've addressed this before we address it in at length in our online group obedience you know we'll pitch for online group obedience. it's very successful uh, we, we're so appreciative but when we talk about this so when is this happening this destruction it's when I'm at work. Well, so your dog is unrestricted in the house. Well, yeah, you know, whatever. Guys, we, we need you to look at that calmly and reasonably, all right? There is no one there to stop this behavior. There is no magic wand. The dog is not moral. It's going to do what it's gonna do. It doesn't, it's alone in the house, whether it's actually anxious or not, it's gonna find stuff to chew up. And especially if you have young dogs and things like that. I mean, sometimes when they get older, whatever. Yeah, they'll plunk down on you know, the couch or whatever. But young dogs, I mean. Wow. You know, like even in some of the Facebook groups and stuff like that, you know, the different dog breeds, um, I'm always like amazed at the, you know, that is a common comment and thread about what do I do and how do I stop my dog from chewing on, you know, and then there's a big, huge list. Yeah. And that's, that's what dog trainers are for, that should be, um, to assist you, to give you tools, to deal with these kind of things, that's exactly what we do. But dogs chew because it's good for them. It is an actual action that cleans, strengthens the teeth, um, it relieves pressure, it relieves anxiety and stress, it is very pleasurable for them. Their jaws are very different from ours. And I mean, I can hear trike chewing on a big bone almost anywhere in the house, you know? And you'll hear him crack. 
and then kind of moan. <laughs> Crack, you know, it's very pleasant to him. I mate him with bones that are appropriate for his head, which is that big around, and it's all muscle. Gypsy is different. She's designed for damage, okay? She's a killer, she's a terrier. So she's designed, was designed to hunt large fur-bearing animals that bite. So Airedales are designed to very quickly end the problem there. She doesn't chew like that. She waits for? She waits for Joe, my Staffordshire Terrier, and he'll crack the bones. Because he's a pit, right? You know, and then she takes it. <laughs> And, I, even my, <laughs> and even my little six pound chihuahua would wait. I mean, because she, you know, teeny little head, right? And she would wait for Joe to crack the bone. Had um, her own personal hyena. Yeah. And then she would snap the little piece of bone away that had marrow on it. And she would go over in the corner and lick out the marrow. So, um, but I'd like to say that if I'm giving anything like that to my dogs, I am always supervising. Yes. Because it's if if even Joe, bone. Yeah. Right. Because if Joe's cracking bones, uh, splintering, see. you know, and it's like, and I'm watching, I might give him a minute to clean the marrow off, but as soon as it's done, I pick it up and it's in the garbage. I do not leave that stuff laying around. Because you know what? He's kind of dumb enough that he'd be like, oh, that's good. And, well, some bone can be really sharp. Yeah. You know, both well, of you, you know, broken bone can be really, really sharp. Yeah. So. Um, they are designed, however, to consume bone. That is, uh, wild wild dogs and stuff chop down anything they can pretty much, you know, they're, they're actually designed to do that. We don't know how many die from injuries from that. Mm -hmm. We have no yeah. idea. Um, whether their they're, they're, uh, dentition is heavier, so they probably chop it. But we don't know that. We don't want your dog to have a major problem. But understand that chewing is not naughty behavior. We don't use the word naughty at dog to dog because it's a moral word. Talking about good and bad. Dogs don't do good and bad. They do what is allowed in the pack and what isn't, what's against the law, what is lawful. So those things aren't, you know, you say, you're, you're chewing because you're obnoxious. You know, you're destroying my stuff. Guys, that's not the case. Most of your stuff smells of you. You are the sun coming up in the morning for the dog. And that's why your dogs often will be so weird about what, you, what you're trying to do. So provide them with a substrate, with an object that, what, blends with the canid, with the canine lifestyle, easy to control. Whatever you do, do not select things that represent or are like Things you don't want. I can't believe how many people buy fleece toys as a chew toy. And then they have little kids that have fleece. You know. My dog can't tell. That's a stupid dog. He's chewing up my, my children's fleece toys and stuff. You know, We bought him his own. Dog doesn't know the difference. Guys, really true. That, that's, that, that is just not the way. You know, you need to, to be with something like and, and even like all the toys that are out there, see, I always go, hmm, you know, I mean, I buy stuff. I have two different types of dogs um, and two different ways that they destroy toys and pull them apart. Um, different prey drives and all those things and the squeaky toys and all that. Well, there are certain brands that, um, that survive you know, a longer period of time. But I can tell you the minute those things start to come apart and they've gotten a toy um, enough and like the big plastic <laughs> squeaker, right? Comes out and Gypsy would love to chew on that plastic. Well, guess what? She does not get to, as soon as I start to see that that opening is there, I pull it out, I throw it in the garbage. Um, so. Just be, be wise. Don't cross your fingers and hope to die. Um, and just think that everything that is out there that is supposed to be for a dog to play with, to chew on. I mean, there's 
story after story after story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've got to kind of think about it. Everybody's after everybody. Online, marketing, big box stores, the toy that can't be destroyed. Right. That a dog will still chew on mm-hmm. and find desirable. You come up with the perfect thing, I'm here to tell you, you make a billion bucks. Okay, because everybody is looking for that. People are trying to replicate or clone bone type materials. Um, Rubber, the Kongs and things. Many of these things work really, really good depending on your dog. Um, I purchased a ballistic nylon, triple stitched, rope tug toy indestructible this has been tested on police dogs and stuff well i was a little bit doubtful of it. but i bought it because it looked kind of interesting i was upstairs in my house i'd given it to my dogs 15 minutes prior and one dog's prancing around and shaking it and stuff i said oh that would be pretty good then i hear this ripping sound right my little female dachshund, this big, is destroying the undestroyable. <laughs> so, we are out of time. Dogs chew. Dogs eat poop. And dogs pee. So, watching them. Your job. That's right. <laughs> Watch them. Keep true, but just understand they're not doing it to tick you off. They're doing it because they're dogs. Law, watching, being observant, will help you with those. We hope that this has been helpful to you kids out there. Um, we will address some more young people questions yeah, send in the us, future. Send us questions, um, and, and then we can answer them for you. Watch for our kids and canines here in the next little while. We're going to launch that, and we're excited. We're so happy to be with you. Join us next Wednesday for our lunchtime q and Have a good week. Ooh.